Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about the Nobel Prize. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains papers. Let's have a look at the topics of discussion that we are going to go through step by step. Okay, let's start with the news. So, the first in the series of Nobel Prizes to be declared, it has been declared in the field of medicine or physiology. And a mystery has been solved that how there are specialized cells for receiving and perceiving the environment in terms of touch, temperature and pressure. That is what we are going to discuss. But before we discuss, let's talk a bit about the Nobel Prizes. Alfred Nobel, who was a Swedish industrialist, chemist, engineer and the inventor of dynamite. He announced in his will that a fund should be created and those people who have a lot of intellectual achievement in the field of physics, medicine, chemistry, medicine and physiology, that is the same thing, chemistry, physics, medicine, physiology, literature, peace. These people should be awarded and through his will, whatever fortune he had, he created the proper funding for Nobel Prizes in the year 1895. And as you must have noticed that I did not mention economics because economics was added in the Nobel list in 1968 by Sergis Ricks Bank. It is known as the Nobel Prize in Economics. It wasn't originally a part of the declared ones. Okay. And there are certain institutes. How a Nobel Prize laureate gets selected? First of all, let's try to talk about that. So, there are different institutes. So, how many mentions I did give you? Physics, chemistry and we also have economics. Then we have literature, we have peace and we of course have medicine or physiology. So, the prize in the field of physics, chemistry and economics. It is given by the institute, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Second comes literature. It is given by the Swedish Academy. Then for peace, a committee is created by the Norwegian parliament that is known as Storting. They form a committee of five members and then they go through the names of the considerable amount of nominees for peace and then they declare the name. For medicine, we have the Karolinska Institute. So, there are different institutes which actually decide on the winners. And how does it do? So, the different institutes, they will call in for names from different groups, university, academicians and sciences in many fields and they try to take into those amount of uh, win, uh, those amount of considerable amount of winners who can represent many diversities, country and universities and a person cannot nominate oneself. Another person has to nominate the person, they might consider, the committee might consider for Nobel and the Nobel Prize is given in terms of a medal. We also have a diploma and also a document confirming the amount. Okay, so this is a brief information about it. Let's talk about Nobel Prize in the field of medicine or physiology. Let's know about it. That the Nobel Prize in Medicine 2021 has been awarded to David Julius and Adam Pataputian on October 4th, 2021 for the discoveries on receptors for temperature and touch. And both the scientists are from the United States. This year's Nobel Prize laureates have allowed us to understand how heat, cold and mechanical force can initiate the nerve impulses that allow us to perceive and adapt to the world. In simple of the simple terms, how cells and in what way special sensory cells are responsible for turning mechanical energy into electrical energy for our brains to in intercept and how we adapt to the environment. Okay, this is the simplest form I can tell you in. This knowledge now will be used to develop treatments for a range of disease conditions including chronic pain. I will try to make you understand how. Okay. How have they discovered it in brief terms? First, let's know about certain prelims facts. In 2020, Harvey J. Alter, Michael Hooten and Charles M. Rice 
won the Nobel Prize in the field of medicine for the discovery of hepatitis C virus. In 2019, William J. Kalin Jr., Sir Peter J. Radcliffe and Greg L. Semenza won for their discoveries of how cells sense and adapt to oxygen availability. In 2018, James P. Allison and Tasuku Honjo won for the discovery of cancer therapy by inhibition of negative immune regulation. Let's try to understand the mechanism of our body. Generally, in our day-to-day -day lives, you are seeing me, you are hearing my sound, and you are hearing me speak, and you are trying to comprehend what I am telling you. You might be holding your phones in your hand, or you might be feeling the pressure of your elbow if you have a laptop and putting you have put your elbow on the table. So you are feeling and listening and looking and able to comprehend everything. This is a very general phenomenon. We go through our daily lives feeling all this. But have you ever thought that how is it possible that a certain amount of pressure on your body is considered painful and a certain amount is not painful? This is because of certain sensory cells which are specialized in nature. And those cells have been found out by Julius and Pataputia. Okay, so this is as simple I can tell you. So our central nervous system works in this way. If I am touching a fire, my bare hands are touching fire. It's too hot for me. This has been conveyed by my cell. It, this message has been given to my brain. And if I cannot adapt to that situation, I will move away. So this is what is important. Because this was a mystery. How do we find cells and which cells are responsible for making us feel hot or cold? Making the pressure as painful or not painful? That has been solved. So let's have a look and on the mechanism. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how the cells or what are the cells? which are responsible for proving that human body has specialized cells for perceiving temperatures. This has been done by David Julius. And what did he use for finding out? A very simple component. It's a pungent component of the red chili, the capsaicin. Capsaicin has been used to irritate the cells and finding out why do we feel a tingling sense or why we get irritated when we are in touch with capsaicin. And as you can see, the capsaicin here, sensory neuron RNA and DNA fragments, these have been used. In the simplest of the terms, in 1990s when David Julius was working in his university, he thought about it and he went into the library having a lot of DNA fragments and Accordingly, he formulated a proper experiment and that experiment was how the protein of the cell is going to react with capsaicin. There is a protein in our cells that is going to react to capsaicin and our, this mechanism will be turned into electrical impulse for our brain and hence we will be able to feel a sort of tingling or irritation. So capsaicin actually has created heat. That means temperature. This is relevant to temperature. Because of heat only, we are able to feel that there is a sense of tingling and that is why this cell has been named as TRPV1. Okay? And as you can see, this cell, when it goes beyond the temperature of 43 degrees Celsius, it opens. Here, I hope you are able to see it. If you are not, kindly raise the resolution of your video or you can also go at the Nobel Prize because everything is sourced officially from the Nobel website. You can go on the Nobel website and watch it. Watch properly this segment. Okay. So, when this cell is having a temperature beyond 43 degrees Celsius, it will open and the ions will send the message to our brain that this particular cell is actually feeling hot and that is why it is able to send, send this 
message back to our body to either stop consuming chili or something else just understand this okay so this is first secondly similarly was done for feeling cold similarly another experiment was done for feeling cold so that was trp m8 trp v1 and trp m8 trp v1 for hot temperature and trp m8 for cold temperature so secondly we will find out about how adam pataputian used gene silencing and how he used micro pipettes to create pressure on a line of different cells in order to understand that there is a particular cell that is going to turn this mechanical stimulus into electric energy to our brain and we will be able to know which cell is responsible so there was a chain of cell and by gene silencing and using and poking through micro pipettes suppose this is a micro pipette and these are the different chain of cells okay this cell was silenced and the micro pipette was used to poke all these cells all right but what happened the other cells which were not responsible for making the human mind feel pressure they did not send any message but suppose this cell is responsible for feeling pressure this has been poked now what will happen this will send stimulus to the brain that the body is feeling pressure so just understand that this is the experiment they have done we do not need to go into a lot of details because that's not important and just from a generalist perspective you must understand that what has happened so he used pressure sensitive cells to discover a novel class of sensors that respond to mechanical stimuli in the skin and also internal organ and they named it piezo 1 and piezo 2 okay so two people are hugging that means they are feeling pressure and how is the sensory is work sensory special sensory class of cells are working here it is shown here piezos in greek means pressure okay just understand that it could be asked in your prelims next prelims not this one so piezo means pressure this is the simplest way i could make you understand i hope you understood it and let's move forward and talk about the implication if a person is feeling pressure which is painful if a person is feeling any sort of temperature which is unknown and why is temperature being adapted in a way we do not know anything about it we did not know anything about it before this discovery how they were able to sense which sensory cells were responsible now if we have the knowledge about it we can have a lot of advancement in the field of medicine and precision treatment first possibility of regulating their function if you know that cell x is responsible for feeling any sort of pain then we will be able to regulate the pain through that targeted cell through that targeted sensory system and not working it on another cell which is not responsible for it first is that that means chronic pain can be treated because we will be able to understand through this experiment only which cells are responsible which class of sensory cells are responsible better treatment with less anxiety if precision treatment is done better treatment is of course going to be the outcome of it and for the patient it will be less anxiety useful in treatment of diseases like cancer or diabetes this will of course give an upper hand to the field of medicine in knowing which sensory class of cells are reacting to cancer cells and similarly for diabetes as well these particular diseases these diseases are extremely hard to and almost if cancer is in last stage it is almost next to too impossible to treat them if we start looking into the causes and sources of certain diseases we will be able to make a breakthrough 
in this field as well. Let's move forward and just try to look at this diagram. This is also sourced from the Nobel website. Okay. So, temperature, heat, and pain through TRP V1, we have core body temperature, inflammatory pain, neuropathic pain, visceral pain, and protective reflexes. These are the amount of different sections where we can have a look into through TRP V1, that is for temperature. David Julius, remember. Second is PISOS 2, touch, proprioception, mechanical pain, urination, respiration, blood pressure, skeletal. This is all related to pressure, right? So, also keep this in mind. You can take a screenshot. These many sectors are related to it. Now, in conclusion, it will be an advancement in the field of medicine, of course. Secondly, diagnosis would be much easier, much less time consuming and more precise. Precision medication, when we for sure know the specific region where the sensory cells are located and which are responsible for creating pain, pressure or temperature differences, of course, precision medicine would be more suitable in such cases. So, I hope you understood the entire segment. That's it for today. Now, as I have already asked you a prelim space question, there is no main space question for today. That's it. We will meet tomorrow again. Thank you so much for watching.